Hey, so welcome everyone. I'm Mary Chapman. I am the program director with the Anne Arundel County's Department of Aging and Disabilities. I'm so glad that you could be with us tonight and I'm glad you didn't have to come out on this cold and windy evening and that you're hopefully in your nice warm uh, living room or wherever you can sit and relax tonight. And I want you to join me in welcoming Pam Brandon, who's our speaker tonight. And Pam is the president and owner of the Educate Training Institute. And for you, those of you that have participated in the Dementia Live experience with me, Pam is the founder of that program. And um, we're so grateful for that and grateful that she has now made it possible for us to do that virtually. So if you haven't seen the training dates from me yet, just keep your eye out for the, those to come out at the end of this month. Um, and I must say that as a silver lining to this time of us doing all of our workshops in Zoom, we're happy to have Pam because she's coming from Texas and we wouldn't get to have her with us if we were meeting in person tonight. So Pam, welcome to Maryland virtually. And um, I hope that you're a lot warmer than where you are tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. It, I'm delighted to join you. And yes, we've had 70 degree days, so um, it's been lovely here. But as I always tell people, we pay for it in the summer. So <laughs> these are our days when we really, really enjoy being outside. And so we're relishing in that because believe it or not, we do have winter here too -ish maybe shorter than yours and not as much snow, but we do get some cold weather. Um, but I'm gonna let you go ahead and get started. I'm gonna make myself disappear here, okay? okay? Okay. So thank you everyone for carving out time tonight. Um, certainly I know that many of you are probably have finished your work day and Mary and I were talking about how this time change just kind of throws everyone off when it starts getting dark so early. So you probably are, are feeling like uh, you know, it's a, a mid-evening uh, uh, seminar, but um, in any event, thank you for joining us. And, and my goal really is to just uh, be able to enlighten you with some ideas today and um, during the session to just make you think about um, going into the holidays. Um, this is a year that um, is different than any of us have ever had. Um, just an FYI, we have 45 days until it's January 1st. And so we can make it. We've made it since March. We can all get through the holidays. And um, again, my goal is for you to look back in January and say, hey, I did it. And I actually learned some things because I listened to this lady from Texas who's shared some of some tips. So um, and I want you to know that um, that I'm I always tell people, even though I um, have been doing been in the professional work of working with families and uh, for many years and, and now professional family or professional caregiver training. I started as a family caregiver, just like you. So I uh, had 15 years on that journey of family caregiving. Um, so I am speaking to you from a person who walked your journey, and so I truly understand what you're going through. That doesn't make me an expert by any means. Um, this is just a journey that's way too complex for anybody to be an expert. And I always say people learn from each other. Um, I spent many years facilitating in-person uh, caregiver support groups and education programs and, and bringing caregivers together. And I would always remind them up front, we're going to learn from each other. I'm not the only person that is here to, to share tips. So don't, um, don't hesitate to chat in or to ask questions or share your thoughts. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So let's go ahead and get started. And before I um, get, dig into the, the meat of the program, I want to just say that um, it's National Family Caregiver Month. Uh, the theme happens to be caregiver in crisis, which I think is very appropriate for um, what many caregivers have had to deal with in the last seven months. Uh, I know seven months has gone by quickly in some respects, and in other respects, you're probably feeling like it feels a whole lot longer. Um, I love the the quote here, one person caring for another represents life's greatest value. And it certainly was a gift to me to be able to care give uh, for my parents. It was also the very toughest journey of my life. So um, hats off 
to all of you unsung heroes uh, who really are the superheroes in comfortable clothes. You're not in scrubs. Um, you're, you're our heroes that we really need to uh, not just celebrate in November, but all year, because we certainly know the, uh, the sacrifices that you give. So thank you to all of you for, for all that you give to your loved ones and to others. 2020 has been a year like no other, hasn't it? Uh, only when normal things are not normal do we realize how special normal things are. I really like that quote too. Um, what happened in March? Our world turned upside down. Uh, we went from suddenly trying to take in what was going on in the world with how is this going to relate to our world? For you, how is it going to relate to the job I have as being a caregiver for caring for my family, for my job, for all my other life responsibilities? Um, and I would say that some things we've gotten used to um, somewhat. I think we're all ready to get back to normal, but that's not going to be for a while. Um, and other things we've just learned along the way. So I, I want to start by, by being able to share and um, just talk about some of the emotions that we have all probably experienced, um, some of us more than others. And this is not a complete list. I, um, I know that there's other feelings that I left off because I want you to think of some other uh, feelings, but certainly um, I think the ones here are ones that, that I certainly felt um, as a business owner and you know, as you know, worrying about my children, my family, you know, that fear of uncertainty for our safety, for, the, for our loved ones, um, for what it was going to look like uh, tomorrow when we had to um, do, do our jobs. Uh, what was that, situ you know, what was that going to look like? Um, the fear of the unknown. And we're not out of that, are we? Uh, the fear of the unknown that we had in March appears to be coming back again, even though we've got some hope with vaccine um, where we've got an uptick that's pretty scary and now all of a sudden we're moving into the holidays with this um, this fear again this um, you know need to be super safe what does that has that caused it's obviously caused lots of anxiety for you as caregivers um, anxiety again for yourself um, I'm sure your loved ones have felt that anxiety uh, didn't take long for for the news media and, and you know, um, uh, organizations and we'd see ads on TV for depression um, because people were, don't cope when they have changes like this that are out of their control. So some of you may be still feeling those bouts of depression. Um, while we have to deal with those, know that many of these emotions are normal, um, but we can't stay in we can't hold on to those negative emotions. We've got to try to move out of those, can't, don't we? Um, loneliness and isolation, obviously. We're, if you're caring for your loved one at home, you're feeling that because they don't have the visitors that they have been able to have. If they're in community, they're feeling it because they can't have visitors there. Um, so, and, and we're feeling it. We're not being able to socialize with friends, family, and and like we did uh, seven months ago. Um, it's so that part of our world has also flip flopped really fast. Much of what we see when we're dealing with this or much of what we're feeling is loss and grief, uh, loss and grief for our losses. Um, uh, hopefully none of you out there have lost a loved one to COVID. Um, but that loss and grief that caregivers feel is often the loss and grief of watching our loved ones uh, perhaps losing their abilities to do things they could do before, um, especially for those who are living with dementia or Parkinson's disease or other diseases that um, we see a little bit of themselves chip away at every day. And of course, caring for them uh, with 
um, COVID is even, um, is, it's even more stress. Um, so the frustration of that, and of course, guilt, uh, guilt just kind of goes with being a caregiver, doesn't it? I always used to say it's that extra special gift you get as a caregiver is you get to deal with caregiver guilt. Um, it's, it's not healthy, but it's just, I, I think it's part of it. I was a long distance caregiver that comes with huge amounts of guilt. Uh, then I became, then my mother moved near me while she had Parkinson's and we went on that journey together. And I still felt guilty because I was caring for my young children and my husband and, you know, all my responsibilities as a young man and caring uh, a young woman and caring for my mom who, um, you know, I, I love dearly. So I, I felt like I was never uh, being, uh, doing a good job with any of it. And so that just all is this big bubble of guilt. So if, if you want to add to this, Mary's kind of looking on the, the chats, if you want to add another um, uh, feeling that you've had, certainly let her know and Mary can let me know. Um, I want to hear what what else you've been feeling in the last um, seven eight months since since our world turned upside down anybody okay we're going to go ahead and um, now we're going to talk about what we are learning not what we have learned because we're not over this what we are continuing to learn i always like to look at the positive um, you know, we deal with the negative, we acknowledge that we have challenges, and then, hey, how, how are we learning from this? Hopefully, all of us have learned some more patience. Um, for me, who's used to, you know, fast-paced and doing lots of things and accomplishing lots of things, wow, having to halt that has been really difficult for me, but I have learned. Um, little by little to be patient, and I hope you have too. Um, patience with yourself and your own feelings and patience with your loved ones. Um, hopefully you've, you've learned to just um, be grateful for the gifts that you do have, grateful. Hopefully all of you have been healthy through this, um, or if you have had COVID, it's been a mild case, but gratitude for um, your loved ones, the time with your loved ones, um, and, and being able to just appreciate um, the, the things that you have that, that certainly we know now so much of our world, uh, people in our world do not have. And if I can interrupt you for a second, we have a couple people had kind of come in with some of the feelings that they're going through. Yes. And, and yeah. con confusion is one of them, especially uh, uh, the, her husband has dementia and sometimes you know he's he's more with it than than not as we know can happen and someone else was talking about how not being able to visit her mom um or not visiting mom when i actually can because her mom doesn't know uh doesn't know her anymore and isn't able to talk to her anymore so those are some more the feelings that they're learning they're dealing with as they're learning um how to cope with this yeah, thank you. Um, so many of our loved ones, I think confusion is a great uh, term. And we, we take on those emotions of our loved ones. Uh, we don't realize it, but we really do. And for those in community that we can't see, that, that's just huge loss. And I'm, I'm sorry for you. And, and hopefully there will be a time soon when we can open up that um, there can be some relationship building at, at some level. I know communities are, are trying to do a lot here. They are opening up on a limited basis. But again, um, that's only as, you know, all it takes is an uptick in COVID and all that changes. So great additions. Thank you for adding that. Um, so flexibility. Um, I talked about that, you know, as um, the person who has had to have her mother in community and not be there. You've had to learn flexibility on ways to communicate. Um, I think we probably got an older generation who is now more tech savvy than we ever thought they would be. Some are accepting it well, others are not. For people with dementia, often um, technology can be very confusing and frightening. So it's, it's simply not working that well. Um, 
then again, we've all learned that, you know, this screen in front of us is now our best friend in communicating with the world and doing our jobs. And uh, so some of that, Mary and I were talking about, you know, some of the things that we have had to go to, which is our virtual education and support groups and, um, you know, resource sharing. And, and that is, um, is a good thing because we're able to reach more people who simply cannot get out. And so those are things that have come to light for those of us in education that want to reach more people that know that even when COVID is done, we'll continue to do this. Um, living at a slower pace, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I uh, mentioned that my mother had Parkinson's disease and um, I was a on the go young mom and slow was not in my vocabulary. And I learned to really relish um, just being with my mom. We didn't have to say anything. We didn't have to talk. Um, I mean, we did when we could, but there were times when, when she was very ill and just slowing down and being with her and relishing that time um, is a gift to me that I will never um, forget. I mean, I, I treasure that. So it's okay to be at a slower pace. And I sure hope that a whole lot of the world remembers that after COVID. Um, and let's slow down for our care partners because they're not at our speed. So um, they can benefit just as much as we can by just being with them uh, and learning to just uh, appreciate each other's presence. New discoveries. Wow, I hope some of you have taken on some new hobbies if you've had time. I hope that you've um, been able to share some new things and new, maybe new hobbies with, with your loved ones. Um, one of the things that I, that I took up was watercolor painting, which I had never done and, and I'm loving it. And it's flexible and it's, you know, fairly easy to learn and doing some fun things. And I never thought I'd do that. So uh, I hope you've been a bit adventurous. And if you haven't, maybe you can take this time over the holiday to, to pull out some things and just try it. Just try to um, broaden your, your scope of thinking I... I can't do that. You know, I'm not an artist, but um, watercolor painting happens to be very forgiving. So um, that's one of the reasons it works for me. And appreciate the simple pleasures. Um, you know, I think we've all learned that um, through this, that we have to appreciate the simple pleasures because our, our life has really gotten uh, much simpler uh, lately. And so hopefully you've hung on to some of those and you're enjoying that and you're enjoying um, that, being able to share that again with your loved ones. How about some, some other ideas from, from participants on what you have learned through this that you wanna share with us? I'll give you a little bit more time this time before I go on to the next slide. I'd love to hear some of your ideas. No ideas. Mary, any ideas? Not yet, I'm, I'm watching. Okay, we'll give it a few more minutes. Yeah. We're not in a hurry, we're, we're at a slow pace, we're good. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and move on, but if somebody thinks of something, I do wanna hear and we'll share it and, um, and that's perfectly fine. So we'll love your ideas, however they come. Okay, so we're gonna now move into some kind of what I call the nuts and bolts of the, of the session. And that is what we came together to do is, you know, how can we reduce holiday stress? How we can, can we cope better with the holidays? Um, hey the Pam, let me, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt sure. you. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have someone who's been playing games and says, I'm forgiving his time and his abilities and it doesn't matter. We're doing something together. And um, someone else has adopted a service member via soldiersangels.org. Love so Those are two it. cool things. Love it, both of those. Um, doing something for someone else, really finding a passion 
and just the game playing. Yeah, just having fun together. And does it matter if you're doing it right or, you know, if your loved one's doing it right, if you're having fun, it's all good. Those are great ideas. Thanks so much for sharing. Okay, so, you know, uh, the holidays are stressful for those who are not caregiving. Um, when you're a caregiver and the holidays come upon you, you can times that stress by, you know, multiply it many times. I, I bet all of you would agree with that. Why? Because you have more responsibilities. You have more things to worry about. You, you know, it's not just about you and, and your own family and your own needs, but you, you're caring for the needs of someone else that you love very much. I think one of the, the things that is most important, uh, especially this year, is that we be realistic uh, about not only about the fact that, um, you know, families change, traditions change. And when uh, caregivers, uh, especially if, you know, that caregiver also happens to be the person who's maybe hosting often or, you know, kind of the, the one in the family who steps up, they feel this need to continue that tradition. And um, it, it's, it's not realistic. You can't do it all. And it's okay that you can't do it all. Um, and we can, you know, we can still have the, the um, important parts of our holiday be important to us, but we don't have to go all out. Um, we don't have to have 17 side dishes, right? Especially this year, if your, your um, guest list is really small because you can't get together, um, just have a few of those and just treasure that and don't regret it. Just look at it as um, a, a tradition that's your tradition for 2020. And I bet that some of you will find out that by simplifying, you've actually enjoyed it more. Um, and it's perfectly okay to do that. So be realistic about your situation, about, um, about what we have going on now with COVID and what you can do without stressing yourself out ask for help and accept it. Ooh, that is a really hard one for caregivers. I know how hard it is. And I will tell you that if you haven't been introduced to the term caregiver martyr, um, I would never be able to talk about a caregiver martyr without um, first telling you that the only reason I bring that up is because I pretty sure I was the poster child for caregiver martyr. And um, a caregiver martyr is one that says, I will just take it all on. I can do it, you know, I can do this myself. I don't need others' help. Um, and you will drown and you will become resentful and you will become angry. And um, it is a vicious cycle that only feeds on itself. Um, and it's very destructive to you, and it's not a gift to your care, give or your care receiver, to your loved one, because you're keeping others out of being able to maybe be with them, do some things for them, and do things for you as well. So um, please avoid caregiver martyrism, and um, instead have a list that you've made that you have ready in your in your purse or in your wallet that if somebody says what can I do for you you know especially now over the holidays you've got that list that you can say this would really be great and you have just um, given a blessing given a blessing to somebody else who obviously wanted to help you because they asked they just didn't know what kind of help you needed so yes when um, when somebody asks you can I help um, graciously thank them and then give them a job to do. And everybody wins when, when we do that. You know, sticking to a budget is, is not a COVID thing and it's not a caregiving thing. Sticking to a holiday budget is just a smart thing to do. And um, uh, this year, for many people whose job situations have changed, whose expenses have changed, uh, you know, gone up or income has gone down, 
um, you know, this might be the year that you really have to say to your families, well, it is time to change traditions because uh, it's not worth going into debt over, over the holidays. Um, again, in 45 days, it's going to be January 1st and the holidays will be over. One more holiday season will be over. And what really you should be focusing on is time with your family, whether that's over Zoom and virtually now, um, and, and being able to live within your means so that you're not causing stress on yourself in January. Now, if your loved one does need things or you need things as a caregiver and your family and maybe close friends ask, what is it I can do for them? Again, um, spend a few minutes on getting a list together now of practical things that, um, that are needed and you can give them that in time for them to shop for deals, which I think there's lots of deals out there now early. And uh, if they have to ship them, it gives them time to ship them without paying high shipping charges and everybody wins. If they don't really need anything, just say, they just don't need anything. So maybe your phone call or your Zoom call um, would be the greatest gift you can give them. And, um, and then you're not faced with, a, nobody's faced with that credit card bill in January that will only cause more stress. So um, stick to your budget, not just to, over the holiday, but, but always. All right, um, you know, this has been a year, I don't have to tell you that there's been a lot of hot topics and COVID is not just one of them, whether to wear a mask or not wear a mask. Uh, and I won't go into those hot topics because we all know that, that um, what they are. It's been a stressful year um, and there's people strongly on, on both sides of the fence politically and, and with a, a lot of other um, societal issues right now. If there is ever a time to set aside differences, it is around the holidays. Um, it really should be a, a permanent you know, motto for your family. But if you are going to virtually get together or safely uh, get together in person, um, how about just, you know, putting those ground, setting those ground rules with your family that says, says we're just going to avoid these topics. Um, also, um, for you caregivers, I certainly know that sometimes primary caregivers are the ones who receive lots and lots of, um, of advice from other family members, especially those that are not always, don't, don't live close by. Um, and just, you know, if you will nicely say, we just, we just don't need to go there. We're just going to enjoy this year. We've had enough stress. We're in the midst of stress. Let's set the ground rules that we're just going to be calm and carry on and enjoy each other. And um, try that and see what happens. I bet that, um, that you know, it might, it might be a different um, conversation and it might be a, a great one. And what a great, great gift to you and your loved one. Okay, um, learn to say no and mean it. Oh my goodness. How many caregivers have a very difficult time? It's a very short word, just two letters. And um, it's, it's something that so many of us, especially if you are a caregiver martyr or you're someone who has to do it all like I used to be, um, you do know that saying yes requests to requests that should have been a no can leave you feeling overwhelmed. It can feel like, leave you feeling resentful and it can leave you feeling angry. So if you are challenged with this on saying yes, when you should have said no, you might wanna reflect and look at that again, especially now. Caregivers, you don't need an explanation. No is all you need. Thanks for asking, but no, I just can't do it. Um, so if, if you must say yes, if you feel the need that there is something that you do want to do um, and it will fill you up emotionally, spiritually, physically, I mean, 
um, and you want to say yes, that's great. Say yes, by all means. But think about the that maybe something else has to come off your list if you do say yes. But if you remember anything from today, it is that no is perfectly okay with no explanation. You have that right as a caregiver to say no and set boundaries for yourself and for those that you love. Commit to staying healthy. I know we always kind of have to come up with this when we talk about healthy and low stress caregivers, but you know, it's, it, with, a, with the year that we've had, some people have taken it upon themselves to really, you know, commit to their health and whatnot. So if you're one of those, why go slide the other direction? Um, you know, starting Thanksgiving day when it's just a feeding frenzy for six weeks, um, don't do it. Just keep your habit. It takes 30 days um, to, to form a habit. So if you've had a good habit going, keep it going. Um, and just remember that if you let it slide in uh, November, December, you're going to be paying for that feeling guilty and feeling bad um, in January. So um, you can enjoy the holidays without going overboard. And, you know, just a little exercise every day, just a little bit, even chair exercises. I do chair exercises a lot at my office because I'm sitting all day now. And it's amazing how good they make you feel. And you don't have to, you can do it to, you know, a, a specific um, program, or you can just move around in your chair and um, do it with your loved one. It'll make you feel great. It'll give you energy. And um, again, we don't need to make huge changes. We can enjoy all the delights of the holiday um, and just not go overboard so that we're not paying for it later on. Acknowledging your feelings is super important. This is so important um, to, you know, and why it's, it's so helpful for caregivers to uh, get involved in caregiver support groups because it's a place where you can share, you can laugh, you can cry, you can, you know, share each other's emotions. You don't have to feel like you're being judged. It's just all, it can be all out there. Um, and that's really very healthy for us to acknowledge our feelings and acknowledge that a lot of feelings, especially now, um, are, are perfectly normal. Um, we don't want to stay there. We don't want to stay in a state of feeling extremely um, depressed or extremely lonely or feeling overwhelming loss and grief. We don't want to stay there. We, that's why we need to connect with professionals or others who can help us bring people together who are in our same circumstances or talk with professionals. Um, but acknowledging those feelings is, is really um, very good for your soul, very good for your emotional health, and very good for those around you. Um, because by acknowledging them, we can then move on to, um, to dealing with them and to dealing, um, understanding why we might be feeling angry or why we might be feeling guilty um, for the lady who can't see her mom, at, um, who is in community. I mean, there's lots of emotions that go with that. A lot of those reasons of why you can't see her um, are out of your control. That doesn't mean you're still not responding and that's okay. Um, but again, so important, keep connected to your support groups, keep connected to the, um, the avenues you have to be in community with other caregivers and um, the resources of the Area Agency on Aging are, are you know, just fantastic. I have for years been um, one of their greatest cheerleaders and will continue to be. And it's, um, it's the people that uh, like the Area Agency on Aging, like Alzheimer's Association and all these, you know, community organizations, they're here to be there for you, especially now and really doing wonderful things virtually to make sure that you can stay connected. Okay, so, and the last time I'm gonna say is keep the holidays in perspective. 
uh, again, we only have a few weeks of the holidays. We've had many holidays before. Um, come January 1st, 2nd, um, the holidays will be over and you can hopefully say, wow, I have learned a lot from, you know, I did two or three, two or three things differently um, because I heard a lady from Texas talk to me and, and I uh, got some ideas. Maybe you won't get any from me, but you'll get them from somebody else. Um, and that's my hope, is that you can pick up a few ideas tonight of things you can do differently, because what better year to try something new? Um, and to know that um, there's Thanksgiving, and there's Christmas, and there's New Year's, and we, we are in a different world. And, you know, next week, is going to be Thanksgiving, and I don't know about you, but we're still deciding what that's going to look like in our family because of COVID. And so whatever, I've just taken the attitude, whatever happens is going to happen, and um, it's going to be okay. So um, put it in perspective, just like, you know, I said in the beginning, put our traditions in perspective and what we really want to, um, what we can learn from this all. So if you have, don't have a pen and pencil with you or pen, um, if you are able to go grab one, that would be wonderful because we're gonna do a little exercise here together. And um, this is something that I did years and years ago and um, obviously did it in person and not virtually, but um, I've simplified it over the years and um, partly because I just think simplifying everything is a whole lot more um, um, powerful. Um, so this, consider this caregiver uh, holiday stress assessment, a gift that I'm giving you, hopefully I'm giving you. It's gonna be something that I encourage you to um, keep this list out over the holiday, uh, take it out again next year. And um, it makes you really think differently about things that your obligations and um, things that you do uh, during the holidays and why some people quickly get overwhelmed over the holidays and others don't. And um, I think we have to look at, you know, ourselves and take a little bit of an assessment. So in any event, um, in, on your left column, you'll put your holiday to-do list or job list. And then I've got three columns there, one first column. I love it. I love doing this at the holiday. I might, it would not be the same if I didn't do this. I just, you know, eat it up. Then the second column is I do it out of tradition and or obligation, not because I love it. I like it. It's okay. That's your medium column. And then your third column is this completely makes me cranky. It, it's not something that really I've ever loved, but I do. So hopefully um, you've had a chance to jot those things down. I'm going to give you a few more minutes so that you can get your columns done. And if you don't have legal pad, obviously just use anything. Um, so I'll give you a few minutes for that. And again, this is something that I did, and um, I'll tell you a little story or two about what I learned and, and uh, 20 years later, what it's the gift that it's given me. So I figured if it, it's, work, it's worked well with lots of people. So that's why I chose to do this with you. And I thought, oh, surely we can do this virtually. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go on to our first um, our first to-do list, and so I'll move it on to, on to, hopefully you've gotten, had a chance to do that. Okay, so here's some common to-do lists at Christmas, things that people just do, you know, and, uh, and you, you will have other things that you do besides this, but I'm going to start with decorating the tree. So is is getting a tree out and decorating just your love of, of Christmas. Just cannot wait. I know people are starting to put trees up now. I'm not one of those, but lots of people have lights up um, in the, you know, in my neighborhood and they're going all out. And I had to 
run to a craft store the other day and it was packed and people were just loading up with Christmas, I think, um, just because of, you know, the, the season and the, the COVID and, you know, wanting to bring some holiday cheer. So if this is something that you love to do, obviously you're going to put that, you're going to check that, you're going to put decorating a cheap tree as your job list, and you're going to mark it as you love it. It may be one of those that you say, mm -hmm, kind of an obligation, it's okay, but don't love putting the strings of lights on, especially when you find that one string is out, you know, can be a little stressful, maybe that goes in the medium column, or no, i not, this year, I did used to like trees, but this year I'm not seeing the whole tree is exciting me. Same with decorating the house. Um, you're gonna mark, you know, jot that down and um, you either love it, it's medium or eh, not so great. Um, baking holiday cookies and candies and breads and, and that kind of thing. Um, while you're writing all these down in your left column, I'm going to tell you a story about me and my situation. And again, this goes back 20 years. Um, it had a especially stressful period of time. My mother had broken her hip. She had Parkinson's disease. My kids were young and it, it was right before the holidays hit. And I was one to love decorating my house, love baking. Um, that was a year that I barely could get a tree up. Um, and that was probably my husband doing it, to be honest. Um, barely a decoration beyond the tree came out. Um, for someone who grew up baking cookies by the dozen, starting on the day after Thanksgiving, I don't know that one batch of homemade cookies were baked that year from me. Um, but you know what? We still had Christmas. My children, I'm not sure, really noticed the decorations that were not strewn through the house. Um, we had wonderful neighbors who brought us lots of delicious cookies that they truly enjoyed. We all did. Um, and I found out, oh my goodness, um, I don't have to do that. And it did stress me out. And over the years, I'm now at the point where if the, the Christmas decoration doesn't, can't fit in a cabinet or drawer under, in the vicinity of where it's going to be placed at Christmas, then I don't have it. I don't keep anything in the attic at all, um, except our tree. Um, and I really love it. I have a, you know, simplified my Christmas over the years. And that's not to say I don't still have precious things that I love. I just don't have a lot of it. Um, so it's this, and it was all from this exercise that I learned this. I was just really able to reflect on this after this had all happened. So um, that's my story. Um, that might help you. Making homemade holiday gifts. You know, we have the blessings of Etsy now, and um, you may not need to pull out your machine, your sewing machine, or your crafting, you know, apparatus or whatever you have, because we really don't have a lot of time. Thanksgiving is late this year. Don't pressure yourself. Pop on Etsy and you can get a nice little homemade gift. And, um, and you know, it can be, it can be what you do. And you might decide that, hey, I really do like Etsy and I don't have to make all those holiday gifts, but I do like handmade gifts. Sending holiday cards, that's kind of gone out the window over the years. Um, and certainly one that I think is most per perfectly acceptable. If this is not something you enjoy doing, that definitely comes under the category of caregivers have a right to say no, no explanation needed. Um, making your holiday gift list, believe it or not, it's like a big deal to some people is to just get that list that very long list together and if we're talking about possibly simplifying if you know if that's not on your love list um then maybe your list gets really short this year and you just get creative or you tell family hey we're just going to have a zoom get together that's going to be our gift to each other or we're going to have a, a socially distant christmas 
time together, um, being safe together, and that's going to be our gift. Same with buying our holiday gifts. Again, that goes back to do we do we need to do it all? And do we especially need to do it all now because I'm a caregiver? Okay, volunteering might be something that's very special to you and um, it is to me. And that's one thing I really enjoy doing, not just during the holidays, but always. Um, if, if you love volunteering and you do not want to give that up, by all means, that stays in the first column. You just might not be able to do that volunteering and do some of the other things on your list. That's completely up to you. Now I've got a whole list of the special holiday concert event in person or via Zoom. Chances are this year, those special events, those family gatherings, those in-person and coworker, excuse me, holiday parties, um, probably will be a virtual event. The question is, do you wanna do a Zoom holiday party? Do you wanna do a Zoom um, family get together? Um, if you and your loved one um, enjoy holiday concerts, decide which ones you wanna go, do you wanna uh, do? Um, and just do those, you don't have to do it every night. You don't have to over go overboard because you can't get out and do them. It's okay. You can pick two or three of your favorites and enjoy that time. So this is, list is really meant to help you kind of look through it all and say, you know, some of these things I've just been doing because, because I've been doing it. I have no answer to that. It's that you know, need to stay busy or need to just, you know, it's the holidays, so I'm supposed to do this. Um, it makes you step back and say, you know, does this fill me up? If it doesn't fill me up, then this is the year maybe that I let it go. Okay, and then, um, then we get to the to-do list. It's really important that we can't let go. We've got all these holiday things. Now we've got, we're, we have the, the, the responsibility to care for our loved one's physical needs, our loved one's emotional and spiritual needs. We have to care for our physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. So what is that gonna look like on this list? Those should not be in your cranky column. Those should be in the I love it column. I, I, I feel that's important. Here's the deal. In order to fulfill those needs, you may need help. You may need to ask for help. You may need to give some of those other things away that so you can take care of your soul. Um, so you can really care for your loved one's needs. So they're not feeling stressed because you're stressed doing things over the holidays that are really not making fulfilling you or filling you up. So your list can be pages and pages long. I didn't, you know, I know there's things that you do over the holiday that I haven't included. Um, and honestly, take, I would say, take an hour. Um, and that can be in little bites uh, and over the next few days and really think about this. I promise you that you will have some things to think about that may truly be a gift to you because not that you've added to, you've taken off of your list. Um, and you will enjoy the holidays and enjoy those things of the holidays that are the most precious to you. And if you don't try it this year, what better year is there to try it? I mean, I say this is the year, this is the year to get bold and to really uh, think outside the box so that, um, you know, you might decide there's some traditions that, new traditions that are gonna stick and some old traditions that, that you are okay with saying goodbye to or just making a bit smaller, uh, making a bit simpler. And so hopefully, um, hopefully this is gonna be something that you can pull out next year and, and um, reflect on this and maybe share it and do it with some friends and some family as well. 
And you'll be getting a copy of this. Um, Mary will be sending out a recording of this so you can actually go through this um, you know, slowly should you want to. I, I'm gonna ask you to do something else then. On January 1st or 2nd, I, I want you to pledge that you're gonna write a note to yourself and that note to yourself is going to be a reflection on what the holiday season of 2020 meant to me. What did I learn from the, the COVID holiday of 2020? What did I take away um, from this that I'm gonna treasure? What things did I learn that I don't wanna do again? Um, and I think you might be surprised if you go through this exercise. Um, my hope is that at least some of you will, will come up with one or two things that are those aha moments of growth for you and empowerment. And that you will be able to say, you know, last year was really weird and we didn't think we'd get through it. And I was a wreck going into it. But it wasn't, it wasn't so bad. In fact, I learned some things and I, I, I think I can work on that. And, and next year, the holiday season is gonna be even better and I'm gonna be even less stressed um, because that's the goal. We don't need to be stressed over the holiday and the caregivers, you, you do plenty 24 seven that um, you deserve a gift to yourself to enjoy this time. Um, and for your loved one to enjoy it too, but they will enjoy it more when you are less stressed. So I hope this helped you. Um, the new year, it's always a time to say goodbye and a time to say hello. And so I hope that, um, that it truly is uh, 2021 is going to be a time for all of you to say goodbye to some things in 2020. We, we don't really want to are not going to want to remember too much. Um, we're going to be able to pat ourselves on the back and say we got through it. it wasn't easy, but we got through it. And, um, and then a time to say hello to new things and to trying new things. So um, I thank you all. I want to open up the chat. And uh, Mary, if you want to come back and uh, would love to hear any comments from any of you and uh, ideas that you have that will help others on the group. Thank you so much, Pam. I'm going to keep watching this chat box here. Okay. Um, but I also want to kind of reiterate what you were saying. So, you know, for folks that are looking for new ideas, for folks who want to share things with other people, how, how um, things have worked with them, what works over the holidays, um, please, if you're not already a member of our support groups, you know, please join us. We have a, a session that's going to be held next week and then two in December. So there's a chance to chat with other caregivers before the holidays are directly upon us. So you all have my contact information. If you want to know more about the support groups, you know, please feel free to, you know, get a hold of me and we'll get you that information. Okay, so let me see here. We got something. So many great ideas, fabulous info, and presenting. Thank you. Aww. Thanks so much. And you know, I was going to also mention that um, that if you write a letter uh, to yourself and you want to share in January with Mary, uh, Mary and I stay in contact. I would love to hear your ideas. Um, one of the things that I used to do with um, my support groups, again, when it was all in person, is we would actually write a letter to ourselves during our exercise, and it would say, this is what I hope that in January I'm going to say about the holidays. This is my goal. And then I'd send the card to them. It was really, you know, kind of opposite of what we're doing here, but um, it was very impactful because they'd get this card, and, and they'd say, oh my gosh, I did stick to to some of these things that I, you know, work through, we usually have an hour, an hour and a half together, and we just really dig into this list. So it was, uh, it's very helpful. 
So hope, hopefully you'll get some ideas from this. But Mary, thank you so much for- Thank you, Pam. We're so glad you could be with us. As I said, you know, without COVID, we probably wouldn't have been able to have you here with us tonight. So I'm very grateful for that. And yeah. uh, for myself, I think I'm now ready to hear my two and a half year old grandson sing Jingle Bells. I'm, I'm not gonna cringe when he starts singing Jingle Bells to me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the little things that are the big things, right? Yes. Absolutely. And uh, again, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. As Pam said, we will be putting this up on our website and, you know, it usually takes us about a week or so before we get it up there. Um, but, you know, check in with me and um, if you can't find it and I'll let you know what the status is. And I want to, again, thank you all for coming tonight and I want to wish you a very happy and safe Thanksgiving, no matter which way you're going to celebrate next week, stay safe and stay calm. It's as Pam says, we're gonna get through this. So thank you everyone. Thank you, bye-bye.